All right guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm actually gonna go over some lab work procedure. In my last video, I talked about how we sell cultures and I actually had an overwhelming amount of emails from uh, everyone on this channel who wanted some cultures. So today I'm gonna run you through a couple orders that I've already gone through. So we have uh, Ray uh, Namdarian. He's got an order here. Ray's getting Hypoloma, Subletarium, and Milky Mushroom Culture. Both of those cultures are really interesting to me, and I haven't really focused too much attention on that. I haven't fruited the uh, Hypoloma Subletarium. Common name for that is uh, Cinnamon Caps. Um, I have fruited Milky Mushroom, which is 039. That's a really interesting strain for us to grow in the warm weather. However, I, I grew that kind of at the beginning of when we started this business. I didn't really know what I was doing back then and we kind of missed our mark. Uh, but what I can say is it did grow well on wood chips. We did get it to fruit with a peat moss casing layer. We also have Lucas Brand Showed from Colorado. He's got an order here. And I just want to say, Lucas, like, wow, man, you ordered eight cultures for me, so props to you. Thank you so much. Lucas is getting our Hypholoma Subletarium, our Pink Oyster Strain, Lion's Mane Culture, Yellow Oyster, Another pink oyster strain as well. This strain I really like. He's getting our wild clone of lion's mane. This is 069 on our list. This is a strain that I've started working with over the last couple of years. And we've really noticed how well it does in the heat. And it does exceptionally well compared to all of the lion's mane strains that I have. And the fruit bodies are, are really nice and they have some weight to it. And this is a wild clone that I got from Eric from Cap and Stem. Uh, he's in Portland, Maine. And this is just a wild clone that he cloned and we traded for. So thank you very much, Eric, if you follow our channel. He's also getting another strain that I got from Eric. This is a Maitake. Um, for my business, I haven't focused too much on maitake because maitake does have very specific requirements to fruit, or at least so what I've read. And because we grow in seasonal greenhouses, uh, we do have a lot more fluctuations and it needs more incubation space. It takes longer to incubate anywhere between six and eight weeks. And I really just don't have time for that. So I haven't focused my research on maitake yet, but maitake is by far one of my favorite mushrooms. We also have a cordyceps uh, strain that I just got and you know, I'm really, really looking forward to trying that. So I haven't really played around with that yet, but I do know this fruits. Um, so anyways, thanks again, Lucas, for ordering this. And Alex, sorry man, I've been a little delayed. I got your order here. Talked about this in the last video. So I'm gonna be doing all of these cultures today. I'm gonna just go over how we do that. Basically, I store my petri dishes up to a couple months. I have noticed that uh, some of our petri dish or one of our petri dishes have contaminated with black mold. These dishes have been sitting up here for two months. So I'm going to be really careful. I'm going to cut the plastic. I'll show you this. I'll cut the plastic and I'll, I'll set aside the good petri dishes and the one with black mold I'll put aside. As long as there's no mold on the outside of the dish and it's just contained, uh, the other dishes are going to be fine. This happens from time to time and especially because we store them for a long time you can get uh, contamination. What's really important is if you are going to store your petri dishes you want uh, to not have any temperature fluctuations because if we're getting uh, excess water droplets in the plates that can breed bacteria and then contaminate your plates. So I like to keep them off to the side like this. They can sit for a couple months at least. So we're kind of getting down to the wire for these dishes so it's great that I can expand them now. I've turned on my electric sterilizer that's been heating uh, for about 15 minutes and it's ready to go once it's red hot. You can get these at Fungi Perfecti and I'm sure there's another uh, there's another place. I might be able to find it on Amazon and if so, I'll leave a link below. These are great. I used to use uh, uh, you know, an alcohol lamp. Not only is that time consuming, but when I switched over to the bigger flow hood units that I have now, um, they actually blow too much air turbulence and they were the flame was going kind of everywhere and in some cases uh, if there's any alcohol dripping down the bottle that would catch on fire so you know it's a cheap solution to use an alcohol lamp to sterilize your knife but it can be actually really dangerous and the great thing about these electric sterilizers is you can put them between two people you can work side by side and really be uh, very productive. You can use the same sterilizer and it just stays red hot until you're done. So I definitely recommend this, uh, but it is an investment, but it's one of the better investments that I make for my farm. We also use isopropyl alcohol that I dilute 50-50 with distilled water. So I buy a big uh, bulk 16 liter 
can of that and that lasts us usually for about a season and then we just make up bottles as we go so i'm gonna be wiping down my surface i'm gonna be using this metal rack here um, you can get these at your local hardware store these are just uh, used in your kitchen cupboard to put dishes underneath and glasses on top and i've just cut the legs to size for my needs and it's a great little petri dish tray that i can put my petri dishes on and just keep it in front of the uh, clean sterile air and uh, last i'm gonna have to turn on the flow hood that's something that will i'll usually just run for about 10 minutes before i start so i'll run the circulation and i also have the uh, the intake behind me in this lab so i'll turn that on um, when the lab just in stasis like it is in the winter um, all I have is this space heater on and that really all I'm concerned about is I don't want my cultures in the fridge here to freeze so we're trying to keep the lab just above freezing but it doesn't need to be too hot until I'm worried about getting cultures to grow at a, at a certain pace so with that guys I'm going to show you how we do this and I'll kind of walk you through as I'm uh, as I'm working through the whole process and then We'll get some culture shipped out uh, to these three and then we have more mortars coming in. And if you are interested, guys, I'll leave a link below for my strain list. Just send me an email. Happy to send that to you. We sell cultures for $25 a plate. put these gloves on and just kind of spray everything down with the uh, isopropanol distilled water mix and I'll just combine a couple bottles so I have lots hopefully you guys can hear me over the flow head Spray down. I'm sure I have a really nice clean work surface. The really nice thing about these trays is they have a lip, so I can slide my plates to the to the front of the flow hood and I'm not worried about them falling over the edge because this lip stops uh, anything from falling. Wipe my hands. Like I said, these plates have been sitting for two months. I did these with my last student this year, uh, John from Sault Ste. Marie. Shout out to you, John, if you're listening. You must have poured these plates, man, because I never have contamination. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. I think I'm going to cut uh, just above where that plate is, and I'm going to at least take the top ones off, and then I'm going to inspect and see if there's any, any more that I need to be worried about. Just want to be really careful not to spread the spores. I'll just start going through these plates. These all look great. You know, over time the agar can dry out, so you do want to pour these a little bit thicker if you're going to store these as long as I do.
I'm just getting down to that one that's contaminated. So the plate above it looks really good. Now this is all black pinhead mold, so it can, uh, just by touching it, you know, dust in the air really quickly. So I just want to be really careful. But there doesn't appear to be any mold. There doesn't appear to be any mold on the side, so it's not like a bit of agar uh, was on the side that contaminated. Uh, when we were pouring this, uh, somehow we were not clean when we poured it in and then all this mold just contaminated just like that. So this is all contained. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, parafilm, I'm going to wrap around it and just make sure that there's no chance for these to get into uh, to all these spores to open up in my lab. So I'm going to do that right now. This way, none of this black mold is going to uh, contaminate my lab when I work in here today. And I'm just going to put this in the garbage. And we'll throw that out. Wipe my hands. And I'll further inspect these plates here. So there you have it. Uh, only one of those contaminated after two months. So it wasn't anything to do with how we sterilized the agar. Uh, it was definitely something happened when we were pouring the plates. And I'm just going to blame John because, uh, like I said, I never have contamination. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I'm just going to start going through the orders. Uh, I'll do a little time lapse to kind of show you guys how, how this works. And we'll speed up the process. And then I'll have a little bit of a uh, tutorial just at the end of this video and we'll go over just kind of uh, how, how we do everything. Okay, so these are the strains that I need to do today to fill my orders. The best thing about having a glass is that you can write everything down and then cross it off as you go. So in order, uh, we have our, our tree oyster, our elm oyster, this is the uh, cinnamon cap, lion's mane, yellow oyster, milky mushroom, pink oyster, this is our local pearl oyster, king oyster. Uh, this is another pink oyster strain from uh, Aloha, the Seminus, and uh, it happens that I've actually almost lost this strain. I, ha I don't usually work with it. Uh, this strain does really well with straw, and we don't use straw here. So I I've been a little careless in keeping this strain alive. So I have one test tube that looks pretty good. I'll see if I can find it here. This is the best test tube I have here. It's uh, it's probably still alive. You guys can, if the camera focuses on there right there. So I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna take a plate and I'm gonna do multiple transfers on it so that if I can get a little bit of mycelium growth, then I can transfer that to another plate and keep the culture alive. And uh, for whatever reason, if this test tube has any problems then I will go back to my other test tubes and keep doing it until I get some mycelium that starts growing. I've never lost a strain that I've never wanted to lose 
So uh, it shouldn't be a big deal. But you know, these last between one and three years, pretty much. And there's some antibiotic agar in here to uh, prevent any kind of mold contamination. But eventually, the, uh, the mycelium just dries out and uh, and dies. So just something to note, guys. Uh, we have to expand these out every one or two years to keep our strains alive and that's just part of the maintenance of keeping a strain uh, culture bank as large as mine. So moving along uh, we have uh, we left off it here this is our chestnut mushroom this is uh, such an awesome strain that I'm going to be growing a lot more of this year uh, this is the uh, wild clone of lion's mane uh, maitake and cordyceps mushroom so you guys can watch me get these all plated up. I have a couple doubles of some strains that I've noticed that uh, the mycelium's not looking as good, so I'm making backups for me. And then I have some test tubes here that I can expand uh, and save some mycelium for, for ourselves, and then I can make some more of these uh, when needed. Well guys, that's going to be it for now. I still have a lot of work to do. Again, if you're interested in some cultures, I'll leave my email in the show notes below. Send me an email, I'll send you our strain list, and we'll go from there. This is probably my last video for 2017, so Happy New Year's guys. We'll see you in 2018, and hopefully we have some construction to kind of start filming and show you guys what's going on. Hopefully you have a great New Year's, and we'll talk to you guys in 2018. Bye for now.